think you're coming. Did Daddy tell you that, that Mama sent some presents home? Yeah. Did he? You're going to get two of them. Don Grandma's the majority of women in prisons and jails are mothers. Usually children may visit if they don't live too far away, but the visiting hours are awkward and they're short. Maybe she would be better off if she stayed with you, Lon? No. No. I think they would take a little bit of time. 20 minutes in Los Angeles, then it's time to be taken away. These babies will also be taken away. They were born while their mothers were serving time. After a few weeks, they will go to relatives, to foster homes, and sometimes they will go away for good. The mother will lose custody. The women are being punished, but so are the children. My child, my baby, she doesn't even know me, you know. And it's really hurt, you know, it really hurts to have children to reject you and say, well, my mother's in a penitentiary. Well, I don't think she can tell me anything, you know. Eventually, this will come into their minds, you know, because uh, it'll be put in there by other kids. Well, my mother ain't never been to the penitentiary. Okay, my, uh, so my mother's been to the penitentiary, you know. Then she's going to come home and say, hey, You've been in the penitentiary, you know. Different little things might upset her, you know, all through her childhood, and this is not good because you can cause a child to really lose what's up here. And it makes me feel like I want to lose what's up here because I know that I brought it, that uh, since I'm here, it's going to reflect on them. They're going to really hate me, you know, I believe that. They're going to hate me, and I hate this, you know, I really, I really feel bad. Prisons are supposed to solve problems, not create them. But locks set up an abnormal world. A woman's mind, her sexuality, her needs are locked up. And problems of violence and frustration inevitably follow. This is solitary, the jail within a jail. A woman we spoke with would spend 30 days there. For what? Threatening an officer. What does it all do to your mind, sitting here, looking at the walls for... <laughs> well, sometimes I feel like it's going to drive me slightly crazy, but I'm not going to let it, I hope. You know, I try to kind of keep myself together, but it's, it's very rough being here like this most of the time with no one to talk to. You know, nothing to look at but four walls and a book, and I've read so many books, I'm running out of books because they never change them. You know, I'd like to be able to at least see out of a window, get a breath of fresh air once in a while. Be treated like a human being, not like an animal in a cage. They told me I had to be kept back here because my behavior couldn't be controlled any other way. Yet on my record, I have never hit anyone, I have never fought anyone, I have never attacked anyone. I've never tried to hurt myself. You know, so what's to be controlled? I'm a person, not a wild animal, to be controlled and kept in a cage like this. You know, I have very non-assaultive record, yet they say my behavior cannot be controlled, so I have to be kept back here for a large amount of time. I tried very hard to get transferred transfer out of this institution. You know, because of the way they kept me locked down, I've been locked down altogether for almost five months between administrative segregation and back here. And back here you can't even get a cigarette, which may not sound like much when you can have them, but uh, it's very hard to be back here, you know. You can, you know, you can get nothing, not even your, not even, you don't even have your dignity really back here. You know, simple human dignity and rights that I think every person should have, regardless of whether they're convict or doing time or what. 
I'm known to go to 42 because I'm known as a homosexual. We are human beings and we are doing our own thing in life. You know, they haven't set the fact that yet, that everybody's doing their own thing. And women are women, and there aren't any men in here. Women without men, that's hard to take day after day, just as it's hard to be without mothers and fathers and children. So women begin pretending in prisons, women set up make-believe families with brothers, sisters, even down to aunts and uncles. The families provide friendship, warmth, sometimes sex, but mainly just someone to lean on. Well, the women here have families. They are, are consisting of brothers, sisters, maybe husbands, you know, uh, mother. Someone you can really talk to because you can't really talk to the officials here. The um, families also are c consist of children. You know, you might have a child that you really like that you want to help if you can without being caught. And uh, if you have a problem, you can go to your mom and say, Mom, I got to talk to you. Or you can go to your girlfriend and say, Hey, uh, I want to talk to you for a minute. You know, it's important. But um, the families here, have sex because we don't have anything else, you know, really to occupy our mind. But most of them, as soon as they, you know, get ready to get cut it loose, they're going back to the men out there on the street. But in here is something to pass the time and to keep out of trouble. You talk to somebody and have somebody that you can really lean on. Oh, I think you'll probably find all kinds of people here. And uh, some of them may well suggest activities of this kind. Uh, it'll be a try on uh, from a good many people. If it's a kind of activity that doesn't, uh, that you don't want any part of, just say so. The homosexuality here is maybe 80 to 85 percent. Uh, half the girls are girls and half the girls are boys. You know, um, the stronger ones take the weaker ones and they become as one together here on the reservation. If someone takes a liking to someone and they don't want to go along with, with uh, that, with their whatever, uh, something like this happens. That's what happened to me. I was trying to explain to the girl for, for 10 days before this happened that I didn't want to go along with her sexual advances and that I only wanted to be friends with her. And uh, when she felt as though there was no, nothing more to be said in the conversation and she couldn't entice me any longer, she let me have it a few times. How, how often does that kind of thing happen? Well, it happens more frequently than we'd like to admit, but uh, I would say actual attacks, maybe on the average of two or three a month. Anytime you're into a, a situation where emotions or feelings are involved, uh, we're in an environment where uh, those feelings are going to be intensified. Any feeling is intensified here. And when people experience rejection, uh, they respond uh, many different ways. One response is hostility, and they strike out at that which uh, has rejected them. Not as free here to see uh, but remove themselves from the situation. You know, it's an intensified, it's a closed system. I told Dr. Reams he said that I didn't go to the rec except maybe once in a while. And he said, why don't you go? Why don't you go? I said, because there's just too much going on there. He said, well, obviously you must have a psychological problem that you don't want to mix with people. It's not that I don't want to mix with people, but there's no such thing as a friend in prison. What kinds of dangers are you now, you know, being exposed to, do you think? Or could you be exposed to if you walked around the campus? Well, there are, uh, a lot of the girls are armed on the, on the reservation here. They, as you know, we can buy razors on commissary. They 
put them inside of toothbrushes so they have something with a handle on them. They steal scissors and surgical shears from the hospitals and uh, they carry these things around with them also. They take butter knives from the dining room and file them down and work on them until they have an actual shiver blade to carry around, which is a very dangerous weapon. Have you been armed? No, never. Are you going to be? I've been thinking about it. <clears throat> Do these women, are they alone? Are they in groups? Uh, what, what kinds of, of dangers do they pose? Well, now, the girl that did this to me is from a uh, big town in Texas. Now, she has a lot of homies here. A homie, What's a homie? A homie is someone who comes from your home, who is from your state and from your hometown. These girls usually stick together. Uh, and in fact, they always stick together. In fact, we had a we had an incident here a while back where New Orleans was against Dallas, Texas, you know, and they beat up upon upon girls that had absolutely nothing to do with even the crowd just because they were from this particular state. And from what I understand from the talk of the reservation and um, a roommate back in my cottage who's come to speak to me through the window here, she said there is a lot. Uh, some talk going on on the reservation that um, Fort Worth is a little bit aggravated at me and after and they feel as though if I go back on the reservation they want to put me back in the hospital. Well, I think that the environment is is difficult to adjust to because it's abnormal. Uh, number one, a person's freedom is inhibited and uh, in my my thinking and my theory of personality, uh, uh, freedom is, is a primal thrust. And I think when you inhibit it, you're going to create problems just to begin with. Right now, many communities are deciding whether to replace their old prisoner jail with a shiny new one or to develop some alternative. The National Advisory Commission on Criminal Justice Standards and Goals objects to bricks and mortar. Instead of locking ourselves into a system for the next 50 years that has failed us so in the past, the Commission calls for a 10-year moratorium on construction. New construction, however, still has its proponents. I maintain that uh, a 10-year moratorium on the construction of uh, prisons will do nothing more than make antiquated prisons, which are one of the great problems right now, more antiquated than ever. So that uh, I think that they should immediately begin construction on new prisons and uh, not try to uh, utilize those antiquated facilities that are causing so much of the trouble. Well, when we're out giving speeches, I think we need to a certain extent to make ourselves feel somewhat valuable and, and uh, successful and important. And uh, uh, a lot of times we talk a great deal about our programs and some of the things we're doing, and we fail to add at the end of that that uh, despite what we're doing, uh, we're not very successful. Uh, history does show that we have been a, a failure in, 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 in the operation of our prisons. But then again, you must remember the philosophy, the proper philosophy uh, of prisons. Prisons are for the purpose of isolating the, uh, the criminal and the antisocial person from society, to protect society from them. I haven't heard of many people committing burglaries while they're in prison. I haven't heard of many people committing robberies while they're in prison, uh, of course. Uh, there is some smuggling of narcotics in institutions, and of course, a murder or so occurs while someone is in prison against another inmate or maybe one of the guards, but they aren't out killing the innocent people as, as they are when they're loose or free or on probation or on parole. I think a lot of, of people are afraid of prisoners because they think only of the violent aspect of what they've done because that's what gets publicity. Uh, somebody forging a check or evading income tax uh, does not make the front page. But somebody who commits a murder, uh, that makes the front page and people know about it. But most people 
who I have known in prison are not violent, and uh, I, I would not be concerned about living next door to them as a neighbor myself. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had no institutions, no jails, if we didn't have to have them? But what would we have in the place of them under the present conditions? There's no substitute for it. What substitute do you have? Give me one. No place else to sit. No, no place in the whole house to sit but here, is there? No place else. <laughs> it's good thing you're not being... In Des Moines, Iowa, there is an alternative. We spent the day with this woman, we shall call her Mary, who recently was convicted of manslaughter for killing her husband. Many women are in prison for this kind of crime. He came home uh, extremely drunk one night and in bad temper and came in the room where I was sleeping with a gun in his hand and it just seems like in within a few seconds it was all over and and it was him that was wounded, and I called the authorities, and they called the ambulance and everything, but it was too late. Mary spent less than 12 hours in jail. She did not lose custody of her children. Des Moines has an alternative to locking women up, a program that will soon go statewide. Under the program, a woman may live in a halfway house under close supervision, or like Mary, she may immediately return to the job of raising her children. It works because women are permitted to be at home, in their home communities, where, they, where they've had their problems, which got them into trouble in the first place. They can continue to work. They can go to school if that's what they need. They can remain with their children or with their husbands. The most important thing is that they're not exposed to the, the brutalizing and dehumanizing aspects of life in jail and life in prison. No reason why they should be confined. They, society doesn't need it for their protection and the only thing it does is degrades the women. We've demonstrated it here, we've shown it here, with all kinds and any kinds of offenses. It does work. Document. According to the Department of Court Services for the 5th Judicial District of Iowa, if Mary had gone to prison for three years, it would have cost the taxpayer $24,000. Under the new program, however, three years of community supervision will cost $2,000. With Mary continuing to work, she'll pay taxes of about $3,000. By not sending Mary to prison, the taxpayers will save $25,000. I'll be sure it's up. So it definitely would definitely say it worked in my case, in favor of society, in favor of my children, in favor of myself, in, I, in favor of everybody. I can't think of anybody that would have gained anything at all by by my being incarcerated. For 200 years, we've been hearing the same things about prisons, correction, rehabilitation. But what does it all add up to? It adds up to bitterness when grown women are told to take down their underpants, to despair when women are locked in solitary confinement for weeks on end to helplessness when all responsibilities are taken away. Without their families, without jobs, pressured by rules and discipline cells, these women come back to society frightened and angry. They commit more crimes, they go back to prison. Prisons do not correct. Prisons do not protect. In the end, they do one thing well, they punish well. But that punishment has a large price tag. The destruction of the women themselves, the creation of crime, and the dollar cost of up to $16,000 per year per woman. Even if you believe in punishment, it's simply not worth it. Crime among women is going up, and communities, cities, counties, and states are now making plans. Let's try to avoid the mistakes of the past. We should confine only the very dangerous. The rest should be supervised in their communities, kept with their children, and helped to find good jobs. We should stop building new prisons. We have enough now. We should and we can get women out of prison. Right now, I'm worried, you know, 
um, I mean, I, I'm worried because I did this time, and I, I'm, I got to go. I mean, but uh, to to what? I don't know what to go to. I got to go, but I don't know to what. You know, like for instance, see, like they should uh, fix up why I could have some kind of job to go to or go to somebody that can give me a lift until I get on my feet, you know. But, I mean, it's just like this here. They feel, the peop the officials here, they feel, well, you don't need your time. Go. You know, that's it. Go. But I'm wondering where, where to go. I was locked up, and they could they didn't do nothing for me, and I couldn't do nothing for myself. I mean, it's just like a dog on a string. I couldn't get, couldn't get nowhere. But now that I'm free, I take care of myself. I don't need them to do it for me. I tell you the truth, it's made me better. I mean, I'm a human being, but they have made me feel like um, some kind of beast. When I drive out of here, my mind will still be back here. I'll be thinking about back here. Just thinking about some of the women's back here. If there was one thing I wanted to tell them, good luck. That's all I could tell them. This has been a presentation of ABC News.